We have started a relationship and a marriage um, series. The month of February, we tagged it, or we have been tagging it, on ending kisses. On ending kisses. So for every week, we have special relationship programs, um, um, sermons that will be a blessing to us. So this morning, first service, I started a teaching. I want to continue this morning. Type of men you should fear. Hallelujah. So when I'm talking of men, both female and male, types of men you should fear. Hallelujah. So I established the fact that when I say fear, I don't mean um, you should cut off. Um, when you fear somebody, it means that you may have to be careful around certain habits and attitude as regards the person. It shows that there's work to be done. Hallelujah. However, when you realize that the changes are not possible, then you should now cut off. Praise the name of the Lord. So the first service I talked about, the man, fear a man who is not interested in growth. Was that what I talked about? Amen. So number two, number two, fear a man who doesn't show signs of faithfulness. Fear a man who doesn't show signs of faithfulness. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. It said, moreover, it is required in stewardship that a man be what? Sorry, be what? is expedient that a man in stewardship. Can you remember the New King James Version? Hallelujah. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Uh, message translation or amplified. Are you browsing it out? Sorry? Message amplified. You are digging it out or what? Why is it taking time? Hallelujah. Can you can we get Matthew chapter twenty five, verse twenty one? Matthew 12, chapter 25, verse 21, the Bible says, His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Faithfulness, faithfulness is um, expedient for marriage and relationship for both parties to enjoy happiness, to enjoy, to enjoy peace. Praise the name of the Lord. So even God requires faithfulness in his business with us. He requires faithfulness in ministry. So in relationship and marriage, it's expedient that your partner should. He has right to. If God demands faithfulness, then the person you're in a relationship with should expect faithfulness. Hallelujah. Expect faithfulness. Faithfulness in how you appreciate your spouse. Faithfulness in how you treat your spouse. Hallelujah. And even the person you're in a relationship with. Faithfulness in how you deal with the opposite sex. Faithfulness. Hallelujah. Faithfulness in understanding that an ex is an ex. An ex is not a friend anymore. Faithfulness. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of you, you have exed the person, but yet you are still bringing the person close. You have exed the person, but you are still giving the same attention you are giving to the person while you both were in a relationship. 
Uh, so you say we are friends, but we are not dating. And yet you have midnight calls with this person. The person is sick. You are the one. The person is always calling and talking to. Hallelujah. Uh, you are not showing a sign of faithfulness. You know, you realize that a lot of people who defend this thing, when their partner starts doing it to them, they become angry. Hallelujah. Uh, it's good when you are the one enjoying it. But when it's now the, your partner that is doing it to you, you're like, what is the meaning of what is? Hey, uh, guy, babe, let's define this thing once and for all. Hallelujah. You know, an ex is what? An ex is past. You know, the, the, the girl I, I dated before I left, she taught me how to break up. Oh, God. When we broke up, I was coming, I broke up in Lauren as I was coming back. As I was coming back, she has blocked me in all platforms. Block me. Block. Phone, block. Everything, block, block. You, block. I was like, what? My heart was making boom, boom. Have you ever experienced heartbreak before? Then while you are still managing, trying to say, okay, maybe if I'm seeing the person's face, I'll be having hope. And the person block you everywhere. Hallelujah. Block. Six months after, she unblocked me on Facebook and said, Oise, how are you doing? I just got to check on you. Before I said fine, she blocked. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. She taught me how to move on. Amen. You don't, you, don't, you don't put fire on your bosom and you don't expect it to burn you. Say, I can manage it, you know. You know, we were ex, so we can make things. Other person I learned uh, blocking was first lady, Jesus. He should have to beg, I say, ah, ah, these people that you are blocking, and when we're, when we're in the, when we're singles in our fellowship, and it, I, I, I ask, I say, you don't have to get married. She may just talk with somebody in fellowship, not start a relationship, just talk to a person, and just see the person that is, is blocked, straight, that's, Block. So you have time. Like, hey, ma, hey, ma. I don't know the guy. I don't know the guy said. Uh, should I? No, he's block. When she has not seen an element of faithfulness, is what block. That was the relationship with before she got married to a most handsome guy, which is me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know. The guy started the relationship and said, God said you will be my wife. So they started. One day the guy woke up and said, God said I should break up with you. First said, really? So all these things, all these problems, he said, yes, that he has prayed, that he has, he has confirmation that God said and everything. So he thought that first little be begging. First he just said, block him, block him everywhere, block. Ah. The guy tried to reach out to her and everything. And the guy, like, maybe when the guy saw that she wasn't begging and she was so hard hearted, the guy now tried to reach out to her and everything. You know, he told the guy, the guy came back now. Because when the guy saw that, ah, who is this guy? The guy said, eh, you know, God has now said that we should start again. That's why she blocked the guy the more. <laughs> because he has not shown faithfulness. You don't tolerate unfaithfulness. The guy is having daughters. He calls them spiritual daughters. Amen. He's daughtering girls. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know yourselves here. You are in your department. You are daughtering daughters. Be, be, after church, you, you say, you say, can we study the word of God that pastor taught? And the time you are studying is 10 at night. What are you studying? You study to a point that from there, the language, the way your voice is sounding, when you are talking the scripture. Can you say romance again? <laughs> and you guys say, oh, stop. He says, say romance. You guys say romance. Say it again, romance. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You don't tolerate unfaithfulness. Don't say that's how he is. He's the father of many ladies. Hallelujah. That's unfaithfulness. Praise the name of the Lord. So, 
when you see a man that is unfaithful, he has not shown a sign of faithfulness. Fear that man. I mean, a lot of people have entered marriage and they're having a headache 24 hours. Why? Because they saw signs of unfaithfulness, but they decided to deal with it. They say, I can't manage, I can't cope. You know, so maybe it was only one girl the guy was unfaithful with, and now in marriage, he's now 20. You are now confused. You don't even know where to start from God. For you know, there's a Janet, for you know, there's a, a Lovita, there's a this one, that, there's a, ah, you are like God, what is this? Praise the name of the Lord. So, fear a man or a woman that is unfaithful. So, when we're talking about having spiritual daughters, even ladies now, they have spiritual sons now that we don't understand again now. So, Amen. So it's a two way thing. It's not a one way thing. Hallelujah. You know, he's always saying, uh, He's my son. He's my son. He's my, he's my brother in the Lord. He's my brother in the Lord. Always giving brother in the Lord time. Mother is giving you time. In this counsel, he said, That is the only guy that can counsel me. Nobody, the person in relationship cannot counsel you. There's a guy that's always counseling you. Amen. You are in marriage. There's a guy that's always counseling Your husband does not have wisdom to can- Why will you marry a foolish man? There's a, there's a man outside that's always come and say, this guy's wisdom is awesome. Your husband, does he have? <laughs> Hallelujah. Those are signs of what? Unfaithfulness. He pursued his phone. And then time his phone, you just find it, he will check. Oh, unfaithfulness. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not free to leave his phone and everything. He's always scared and all because of certain innuendos that he's doing. Those are signs of what? Unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness is not even with a physical being. Unfaithfulness with social media, porn. Watching certain dirty things and all those stuff. That guy is already cheating on you with a, with a visual babe. Hallelujah. No, some of you, no, 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 no. He, he told me that that's how he has to learn sex. How will you learn sex from porn? So when God created man in the beginning, he said, man, I want to teach you sex. He now show, he now brought that TV, he said, TV appear, porn. They started, they started watching porn. He said, these are the, they have sex. You know, Adam, uh, these are the styles and everything. That's how God taught them uh, sex, Abby. Did you see it in your Bible? Uh-uh. He just created Adam. Adam saw Eve and said, Kai, this is now the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. And immediately, and Adam, that's the word. (laughs) And Adam knew Eve. Do you know that knowing? Oh, God. You will never know it if you are not married. Oh, that's why you are doing bad doors, not knowing, no. That's why. That you do and start asking God, God, oh God, forgive me. Have I sinned? Have I not sinned? All those why. No. And Adam knew Eve. And they gave her to children. Amen. They didn't need to watch porn. So don't defend it as if he's saying that he wants to learn sex. What are you Sex comes natural to every human. I might tell you somebody. Sex comes natural. There's no mystery behind it. Is the world that has created a system because they want to magnify immorality. They create a system where they now start polluting a generation, telling them that you see, you need to learn it. You need to go and watch porn and everything. And these old porn that you watch, they are not even real. These guys are on drugs. That's not how they have sex. They cannot be on the bed for two hours. Doing what? Amen? You don't have work? <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you say, yeah, yeah, when I marry her, all day we'll be having sex. We'll be having sex all day. Fear that man. He's jobless. He's jobless. What are you doing on the bed all day? We'll go 16 rounds. What are you doing 16 rounds? What are you doing with it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, do you expect me to go through this route, right? Because we are in church, right? Why be human being now? Uh-uh. Hallelujah. So it is important. Unfaithful. I'm telling you, there are couples, the man is watching porn and he's not having sex with the wife. 
is gotten so addicted with porn to the point that he doesn't have attraction for the wife. Ask the guy, do you watch porn? Don't waste time. Don't say he's a Christian. Many Christians now, many Christian brothers, their form of release is porn and masturbation now. And many of them are so addicted to it that they naturally do not have natural love for their spouse. So you must ask that question. Even ladies as well, too. You see a lady, she just cried away. You are like, man, this lady is faithful. She doesn't even care about guys, but she cares about porn. And sex toys is the one that is raining now that a lot of ladies now say, quata, quata, me, I'll just buy sex toy and everything. If my husband doesn't care for me, I use sex toy. But this wasn't so from the beginning. So those are the things you must look out for. See, when it comes to sex, let me hit on this sex again. Because young people, you like put yourself under pressure. When I was still young, about to get married, I was under this pressure. You know, when people are talking, they say, man, you need to perform. You need to perform. Perform. When I got married, I entered married with that performance mentality. They want the only minister that say, who they give me award? <laughs> This whole performance, performance, who will give me trophies? Is it not me and my wife? Who is seeing me? The people that are even coming to deceive you now, if you go and check that, they didn't perform anything. They say, man, I perform, I kill him, I kill him. What is kill him? An animal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nobody is giving you awards. Do what you can do with the grace that God has given to you. Amen. Those plenty, plenty talk. Two minutes man. Are you a two minutes man? Those are things from the pit of hell. Can the two minutes man give birth to a child? He give birth to a child. You have a baby. You are okay. <laughs> Please don't overread it. The one, the one I'm saying it. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That doesn't mean that sexual satisfaction in marriage should not be considered. Get my point. Um, so when you have issues of sexual satisfaction, it is good that you see a sex therapist. You know, we can walk through that process for you. However, what we are saying, there are some people, I do not know whether because they are possessed, <laughs> whether because they took drugs, before they enter marriage or something, there's an animalistic tendency towards sex. The truth is that, if you check very well, it may be a demon that is walking through that person and the person doesn't know. I want to have sex. He tie me, beat me, flog me. You may be possessed. You don't know. <laughs> I'm serious. This is not beyond fiend. It was the film you watched. That spirit entered it to you. Stab me. Kill me now. Kill me. <laughs> Sex is not like that. Too. <laughs> God did not create it like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Sex is to be understood by you and your spouse. There's no blueprint for sex. Every marriage has their uniqueness. You understand what I'm talking about? So, how do you derive pleasure with your wife? When both of you have explored it beyond books or beyond what people say, and you've gotten your formula, stay with your formula. Every marriage has their uniqueness when it comes to sexual satisfaction. Don't put yourself under pressure because of one book that you read or because of what you saw on TV and all those stuff. And all those, no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. When you are getting married, we are into our relationship class. We can go deeper. I mean, there are certain things I may not be able to say here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, Mr. Nelson is an expert when it comes to things like this. He can teach us some steps and some rudiments. He's the head of the family life um, uh, ministry. So he can teach us on that. Hallelujah. So um, I'm not against your styles and all those stuff, but be very careful that those styles you are talking about, I hope... They are from 
heavenly realm, or maybe you got it from your earthly um, perspective. Praise the name of the Lord. So, when you now carry, the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If your mind is not renewed, you start putting demand on the person you are getting married to or you are married to. Demanding some kind of sexual stuff. So, when the lady is not giving you or the guy is not giving you, that is when you start thinking of going outside. You see a lot of people say, it was because she wasn't giving me. That was why I cheated. Amen? You didn't cheat because she wasn't giving you. You cheated because your mind wasn't renewed. If your mind was renewed, see, Adam did not watch anything to know sex. What he did, that was what he called sex. He wasn't under pressure or competition with anybody. It was what he did. See, for those of you who are still virgins, I beg you in the name of God, keep yourself as virgin. You, you don't, when you corrupt your mind with a lot of things, tie, this, that, when you enter inside marriage, it becomes a problem. You're not like Ada. You're not like Jessica. You're not like this. And the more you are doing it, the more, plus the spirit, you are going to deal with mental challenge, physical challenge, the demonic challenge. Then becomes a problem. No matter how your wife satisfied, you are not satisfied because you have had terrible experiences. Praise the name of the Lord. Is that understood? So, faithfulness is very key. Number three. Fear a man who doesn't respect his parents and spiritual authority. Fear a man who doesn't respect his parents, you can add siblings, and spiritual authority. So I may have to give scriptures, a lot of scriptures on these, because this is usually an argument concerning a lot of people. You know, you want to justify, especially in our society today where when you go on Facebook, you see people talking against elders, talking against um, spiritual authorities, talking against parents. You see an elderly man, a young person can just insult the person. I'm, I'm on Facebook and a 16-year-old boy is cursing me. And, you know, I tell myself that if I, if I wish you can, if you can meet me face to face and repeat this thing, you are dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Facebook gives us the leverage for us to talk anyhow. Hallelujah. So, um, when you are under that kind of a platform, you can be influenced in how you deal with things. You see a man of God in the bid of trying to correct things in the body of Christ, throw some kind of words against pastors, against leaders, and all those stuff. You know, so, whilst what he's saying is right, while you are celebrating, the bid of trying to celebrate what he's saying that is right, you will not realize that. You do not know that you are contacting the same action at which he is talking, that action of rudeness, that action of insult. You know, you are celebrating, I said, man, this man is making points. But in a bit of celebrating the truth he's saying, you do not know that you have contacted his attitude at which he responds to people. Before you know, one day, you yourself will want to talk to an elderly person. You do not know you are working under an influence of what you have seen, what you have heard, and now realize that you start throwing words like that. Hallelujah. So let's go through scriptures. First Peter chapter 2 verse 18. First Peter 2 verse 18. It said, servants, be submissive to your masters with all what? Respect. Be submissive with your masters with all respect not only to those who are good and gentle but also to those who are what ash on that scripture says to those who are what unreasonable unreasonable so this spiritual authority is not just about church it's even about your workplace it's about your workplace your boss the people you work with it says servant be what submissive to your masters with all 
not some respect, with all respect. Not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are ash. You know, God begins to teach you how to deal with people that are ash, unreasonable. Certain times he allows you to walk with them because he's training you. Amen. When you have built capacity serving a boss that is ash, you realize that you can walk anywhere. There are some people that can walk anywhere. There are some people to date, the reason why they've not had a job was because they rebelled in their first job, rebelled in second job. Till now, they cannot adapt to anybody. When they discipline them, they walk up and they leave. They walk out and they leave. They walk out and they leave. They even insult the boss on top. However, you know there are manners of leaving the place as well too. You don't just wake up one day. You wrote an application letter to get a job and now you are leaving. You just out of anger. You leave and block everybody. Those are not good manners. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Watch out for people like that who are rebellious. I'm, and I'm going to tell you why you have to watch out for them. I just want to throw some scriptures. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate First Lady while she goes out? Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2 verse 13. First Peter chapter 2 verse 13. He said, Therefore submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme. It says, submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as the one in authority. So, when people are in authority over your life, scripture said you should do what? Submit not because they, will, they are perfect, but for the Lord's sake. Are you listening now? For the Lord's sake. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Hebrews 13, verse 17. He said, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your soul as those who will give an account. Amen. As those who will give an account. So, a man who wakes up in the morning and says, uh, you want to start a relationship with somebody now, and the guy says, you know, so which church do you attend? They say, me, in this opening, there's no church that I've been able to accommodate my grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've weighed other pastors in the city of Benin. No church. You know, my theological wisdom is higher than all the pastors in the city of Benin. And you now, you are clapping. Say, wow, God has given me a spiritual scholar. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> First of all, the man does he have an authority over his head. And it's very dangerous. You want to know why? In, in, our, in our marriage counseling classes, we have realized that couples who come alone without the other person because the other person does not believe in the lady's pastor, the guy's pastor, or doesn't even have a pastor, realize that we find it difficult to solve their marital problem. So, let me give you a practical example. We are in a counseling session and this lady comes. My husband is this. My husband is that. In my marriage, I don't know what to do and everything. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, these things you have said, they are facts. Can you call your husband? Let's find a solution. My husband, he doesn't believe in any pastor. Okay. If he doesn't believe in me, he's understandable. I'm not his pastor. Where is his pastor? He doesn't have a pastor. How do you solve that marriage? The next you tell a lady, go and be praying so that God will change him anytime. It could be internal. It could be into eternity. Amen? So, 
You need an authority over your head, number one. Then you need to marry somebody who has authority over his head. Who is your mentor? He calls somebody in abroad. My mentor is T.D. Jakes. Okay. So when you have marital problem, is, you ask him, is it T.D. Jakes that we can say us? Can, can you marry somebody that is realistic with life? Even if he has a pastor, can his pastor talk to him? Does he respect his pastor? Is it the kind of person that comes to church and finds fault? Finds fault. Find, that kind of, say, that praise all those things. Say, man, the Rema, the guy is, oh God. Oh. See, nobody will be able to talk to him. And there's evil tendencies that you marry that kind of a person and you may not even go to church. Because one day you'll wake up and tell you that, see, I'm tired of church. Let's not go. Praise the name of the Lord. One day my father woke up like that and said, I beg, he's tired of church. Pastor offended him. I'm tired of church. I beg. Um, I can do church from the house. He sat there in his house and was, he was, um, he, he bought Kenneth Higgins' book, Casey Price, all of them. He would sit down and he will be reading the book. All of us would go to church. He will be reading at home. Won't come back, he's sleeping sometimes. Amen? Now, we now, my mother found, found a way to force him to come to church. One of those days, robbers came to us on his Sunday after service. And he gave us reason. He said, you see, all the while he's staying in church, robbers did not come. Now I went to church, robbers now came. And I resumed staying back at home as the watchman. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But some have now realized that some of my siblings now did not now find interest in church because my father laid the foundation of not going to church. Amen. It tells you that, you see, you see church, church is everywhere. Church is in me. The presence of God is everywhere. The presence of God is at home. So it doesn't matter. Online, I can do church anywhere. That's a wrong conception. Evil scripture said, do not despise the gathering of believers. Listen, outside the spiritual benefit, there's something about community. Before many of you became Christians, if you check your mothers and our parents, they had clubs that they go, Club 91, Club this one, Club that, right? Uh, there's Ogboni Society, there's something they call fraternity, all those stuff. You know, there's benefit being around a community. In a university, there's something they call cult group. People gather together basically because of a common interest. They are social group. People gather together for common interest. Now, God, you have given your life to Christ. You do not see the reason why you should be in the community. You want to stand alone. Later, something happens to you. You blame church. Nobody was there for me. Who are you in the community? Amen? Who are you in the community? Are you a part of the community? Are you a part of the family? Hallelujah. One girl was, was getting married many years ago, not in the church I pastor there. You know, this guy, we were having dinner one day, and I, before the dinner, I gave an instruction. I said, please, no, nobody should wear armless or something. Don't come to church and expose your breast and all those stuff here. Yeah. They said, okay. And this girl came and still exposed her bust. And I said, you cannot stay in this church. All of you go and carry uh, clothes. Cover your chest. Wrap it before you enter this hall. The rest went to go and cover. Only she out of anger. She slammed the door and she left. Hallelujah. So somehow we tried to reconcile, reconcile to manage to bring her back and all those stuff. But she still kept her attitude. Now, it was the day when she was going to get married. On the day she was going to get married, her mother was calling me, say, Pastor, let church do help the girl. Let church help the girl. Ah, I say, church, help the girl. Help in church comes natural. Many times is the investment you have put in church. It's not even about me. In the first service, I talked about relational growth. It is the investment you have put in church that will make a lot of people rally around you if you need that kind of rally. So, she, she decided to get married. All the media team that I mobilized to go for the program, all of them came late. The program was 7, 10 o'clock. All of them were coming 10.30. The hall was empty. I, I kept announcing it, announcing, announcing Nobody showed up. 
At the end, she said, Pastor, you are wicked. You know, Pastor is the blame for everything. Pastor, you are wicked. You frustrated my marriage. I said, no, it doesn't work like that. He that wants friends must show himself friendly. Hallelujah. When I was getting married, it was three hours they paid for. It was one hour we actually paid for. Without IV, the old place was jam-packed. My brother went to go and pay for the second or of overflow in wedding. Overflow was jam-packed. My father-in-law, is a, he drinks. He went to go and pay for the beer parlor. <laughs> I was like, and carry his commissioner friends all of there to that side. He went to go and be drinking there. Amen? He that must be friendly must show himself friendly. My middle younger brother is not a friendly person. He's a very isolated person. So when he wants to do his wedding, in short, when he was getting married, he told me straight up, he said he wants to marry in seashells. He wants to marry by the beach. Seashell is a country in Africa, in South Africa. He wants to marry by the beach. I didn't expect much from him because if he wants to marry in Nigeria, who will come? <laughs> Amen? Is his personality. So he wants to marry now. He's blaming people and all those kind of stuff. He went to seashells. We flew to seashells to go and join him by the beach. Well, less than 10 people in the marriage. A white woman joined, joined him. I stood as his father. He got married and he flew back to Europe. And it's cool. But don't place demand on certain things that you do, not, you do not deserve. That's the word. You don't deserve. You want friends, then you must show yourself friendly. If you're not friendly enough, then just be a darrow. Something made me get to that point. So, let me let me let me let, let me throw more light again for our ladies as well too, because when you are going to get married, you must understand that your husband becomes your first authority and not your pastor. Amen. Let me say it again: your husband becomes your first authority. First Peter chapter three verse six: your husband becomes your first authority. And he must be obeyed. The Bible says, and Sarah obeyed Abraham. What did he call him? Calling him Lord. That is an example of what God demands from us. That the man you are submitting to becomes Lord over your life. You can give your opinions. You can share your points. But however, the final decision comes from your husband. Amen? Amen? Okay. No, there are some women that are feminists. No! What are you saying? Colossians chapter 3 verse 18. Colossians 3 verse 18. Say, wives, be subject to your husband as it is fitting in the Lord. So that is the perfect example that what wives should submit to their husbands. Now, the balance of it is this. I tell single people, never marry a man that you cannot submit to. Are you listening to me? Never marry a man that can, you cannot submit to. Because when there is clash of leadership in a home, you guys will not make progress. You see that the guy is a chain smoker. You say, if I marry him, I will change him. When you marry him, see, it is a speed. Don't come and meet me and say, Pastor, he's a smoker. What should I do? I'll tell you, submit. You have to accept him. He's your husband. He's your head. That's nothing you can do. The only thing you can do now is to take him to God in prayers. That God will change him. And we do not know when. Is it true? There's no time limit to that. So, don't marry a man that you cannot submit to. I was about joining a lady, and the lady was already telling me, said, I, she has been dating this guy for two years in Benin. And the guy was telling me that I have a landed property in Benin. I've not told my husband. Even my salary, I've not even told him. And they want to marry. I thought, I said, that's not marriage, Joe. Marriage is not cultural based. Don't marry based on what is happening in Benin. That all the women are landlords. They just wake up one day, and the husband says, ah, so you get a house. That's not marriage. That's culture. You don't marry based on that. You marry based on what God is saying. Submit. I asked her, I said, 
that your house and your money, will you submit it to your husband? She said, lie, lie. I said, don't, don't marry him. Don't marry him. They, 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 they married, they, 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 she, she, she broke up the marriage because of that. She said she would never submit to the guy. And there are people like that. You don't wake up one day, you are saving money. You are the, a man. You people started marriage together. Then you want to build. They say, I want to build my house. And you are a woman. What is my house? Because my husband's money is not up to my money. Scripture said what? Submit. If you like, be the richest. Submit. Single ladies, don't marry a man you cannot submit to. Don't go and marry a fool. And I will, I will I submit my money to him. <laughs> oh God. You will submit to. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? In scriptures. So don't deal if you do not, if you have not laid proper foundation. Don't be like those women or those ladies that they tell themselves before they enter my me, I'm going to plan my own investment. I'm going to plan my own life and everything. Uh, all my interest in this marriage is myself and my kids. Jesus, where does that come from? And it comes from the fact that some women, they just believe that men don't just have head. And because they have that mentality, that's why they usually marry men that don't have head. And they now fall in that line. They're everywhere. I met a Christian couple. The woman has already started building a house. Still the, this cultural thing that rings in it. She's building a house. The man just woke up. I did build my house so, for my mama. <sighs> and they are, they are staying in a rented apartment. The woman is building a house. The man took it as a challenge. He said, even me, I will build my own house. And they started competing. They started competing. So each is building a house for family. They don't have house for themselves as family. You see, demonic wisdom. You enter into marriage expecting that the marriage will not work. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, the man is the head of the house. The man is the head of the home. Pastor, what if the man's head is not head? <laughs> Let me share the story of Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth backslided was not, I mean, was not going to church, was very terrible, was so demonic on his wife. So demonic on his wife. When the woman is going to church, you shout out the man, what's wrong with you? You can't go to church. Bye, 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 bye. Where's my food? Uh, the, the woman say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. She'll go on her knees and be begging the husband. While she's begging and trying to make things happen, she will be praying and say, go touch my husband. Go touch my husband. So one day she went to church and came late. As between goes out, peep through the window and like, you came late to my house. Go and sleep with your pastor. You can't come here. They, 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 they. Shouted on the woman. Ray, 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 and left the woman. The woman slept outside in the snow. The man went to the bed and slept and woke up. In the morning, he opened the door for the woman. Anyhow, the woman said, Thank you, sir. The woman went to the kitchen to go and prepare meal for her husband. Prepare the meal. And she put it on the table. I went to go and meet her husband. I said, sweet, the food is ready. The man came to the dining table and saw meal from a woman that he just treated anyhow. And he asked the wife, what are they teaching you in that church? I want to go to that church. It was the wife that converted me to Eagles Word. The man that raised the highest dead bodies in ministry so far is me to Eagles Word. His miracles were astonish, ast astonishing. He showed when the wife died, <laughs> the man had grace to raise that body. When the wife died, he was ministering to him when he heard that the wife died. He went back and he raised the wife back to life. 
I said, you didn't, honey, you didn't tell me fair way that you were going. And they hugged themselves and everything. And the woman slept back. Who converted him? A wife. You see, some women battle ass. You are a nagist. Love is a weapon. Ephesians 4 verse 15 says, speaking the truth with love. Love is a weapon. You, 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 you're not your girl. You're not your girl. Say it be. See your mate. See your mate. Not your girl. Not be your mate, be Mr. So so and so. You don't buy car. We still a trek. Fool. Your husband. He will remain a fool. When I was dating first lady in the church that I was there, no girl would have dated me. No girl. No, in that, no girl. <laughs> oh God. When she was when she was dating me, that we started our relationship. When I tell her that I was going to Ozo, she would call me on phone in the morning and she's praying the Holy Ghost. La brakata ya da braka da ba da ba. Sweet, as you go out today, you will experience favor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtain favor. Because you have found me, you will obtain favor in the name of Jesus. That's what she was doing. I say, Amen. I will go out. Broke. But there's a woman at my back that I know she was supporting me in the place of prayer. You can't put anything on the table. Brazilian air. Phone. You didn't kiss me. You didn't send me a love emoji. That's the only value you can add. Women as right. Proverbs 2020. Let's read Proverbs 2025 20, round off. Proverbs 2020. 20. Whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in what? Deep darkness. You know, some people are operating on that cause, they don't even know. They don't even know. But if any man is a Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. You know, it's very easy to quote that scripture, right? The truth is that all things are passed away, all things have become new. It's the truth. And we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's the truth. But you see, when God destroyed the world through water, he now entered the covenant with Noah. And he told Noah, he said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. You see that law? Jesus' death did not clean that one. <laughs> Jesus' death did not clean it. Whether you're a believer, you're an unbeliever, is a principle. As long as the Earth remains, seed time and harvest. So, so a, a believer just you don't know why your head is not carrying oil. <laughs> Maybe you need to go to your father or your mother. <laughs> I'm telling you. Maybe you need to go and do the needful. Put put up this, this scripture. Maybe you need to go and do the needful. To go and reconcile. So, oh, my father messed me up. My mother messed me up. Uh, no, no, no. You, you just have to find a way to love them. To get that prayers out of them. It's very important. Amen? He said, honor your fathers and your mothers that your days may be long on earth. You see, long life is attached to honoring parents. These are scriptures. It was not just in Ephesians, it was in Exodus. Let me get it out for you. So, it was the New Testament that, 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 that Exodus 20 verse 12, Exodus 20 verse 12, he said, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord, your God, gives you. Hallelujah. So, this honor is key. This honor is key. Honor to spiritual authorities. Honor to your boss. 
is key in an organization. Some of you don't know how to buy gifts to the people you are working with. You are serving on that. No, you must learn it. You are working with a wicked boss. Learn to be giving you gifts. Inside that wickedness, learn to give me gifts. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Learn to give him gifts. This property that we're in, the person that is in charge, one day was dealing with us. Or one period was dealing with us. Dealing with us. Deal, deal. You know, beneath the one we hear church. It was deal, dealing. One day we just came to church. All our signboard, everything, they carried everything and they threw it on that road, on the road. Threw it. Pwah! I came, I was like, what? What was all this now? What kind of wicked? Can't you, if we had done something, can't you call us? So all of us gathered, all of us were, what is the meaning of all this? Da, 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 da. Pastor, what are we going to do? What are we going to do now? I said, buy him one bag of rice. He said, eh, Pastor? Buy him one bag of rice. One bag, full bag. Call him and give him. Use it to greet him. For this thing he has done, give him. They called him on phone and said, Pastor, so she should give you one bag of rice. Say, eh? He was expecting fight. Give you one bag of rice. I said, put it as part of the curriculum to be honoring him. The story changed. Honor is a weapon. It's not fight, 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 fight. Anything I, I will show them. Show. No, you are tired of showing. Showing does it not, you know. <laughs> you need oil. See, in this world we are in, eh? You cannot take the fact that there are people that are not talking, talking about your matter. Whether in your organization, in family, in everywhere, people are talking. And so they talk, the, the, the decision they made in those meetings is the one that is the highest bidder. I was serving in a church many years ago. I was the one that was thriving as a pastor. In short, when I got to the ministry, I asked the, pa- the person that made me the pastor there. I said, what is the key to succeed here? He's my mentor. What is the key to succeed? He says, honor. Find the boss and always honor him. You will grow. He said, you succeed in ministry. He said, that's all. He said, pray, but I don't need much prayer. Just find the boss and honor him. Your church will expand. I said, wow, awesome. So I asked them, I said, when is our boss's birthday? That's the senior pastor. They told me his birthday. I gathered the people. I said, everybody, we want to give. We don't have money in this church. Bring yam, bring this thing, AC, anything you have. We gathered everything. The man came. When we loaded this jeep that I came with, the jeep press. Hallelujah. He called me on phone and said, Oh, I have been in this ministry for over 30 years. He said, Nobody has done this thing for me. He told me. He said, Even at my headquarter church, as big as it is, over a thousand plus, nobody has honored me like this. He said, May God bless you. Three years after, I was now inside ministry battle that would make me lose my office as a pastor. It was intense. Because the man that was battling with me, the man has levels. The man boasts. He would tell people, this one I heard him. I was coming, climbing the staircase. He was already talking to my mentor. He said, oh, he's, he will see in this ministry. I will take him out. He should go and ask of me the people I have taken out of ministry. And he has taken people out of ministry. It will take you out of ministry to the point and frustrate you. When you see God, you can't identify him again. You will see Jesus and say you will not serve Jesus again. So people are wicked. He, when I came into his car, he said, hey, now you have come. You have come. He was laughing. Me, I was laughing. <laughs> In my mind, I said, this guy doesn't know. <laughs> doesn't know. So they called us for a meeting so that all of us will sit down and settle the matter. That my provincial pastor, the over all earth was there. So he was talking. I sat down. Hallelujah. So he was talking. Oh, he's did this. Oh, he's did that. Oh, he's did this. Oh, he's did that. We're just talking. Oh, he's da 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 da
He has finished talking. Me, I was there. I crossed my leg. My parishioner pastor said, he didn't call me to judge matter. He said, uh, Mr. Pastor Soswanso, he said, please, henceforth in this ministry, let always reports to me directly. Don't have anything to do with him again. You see his church, leave his church, don't have anything to do with him. The guy was shot. By hierarchy, I'm not supposed to report to the overall boss. I have people I must report to before I get there. The man, when he saw my heart, <laughs> he said, this boy, leave him, he's a good boy. He said, let him, he broke the protocol. Let him report to me directly. Honor is key. Take it to your organization. Take it to where you are working. Take it to church. Take it to your parents. Take it to every authority in your life. Your labor will be reduced. Your speed will be fast. Because there's a place where people gather to judge matters. It's the one who understands the principle of honor that goes far. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word we have read today. We pray, God, that you help us in our relationships, in our marriage. This wisdom that we have learned, we pray, God, that is applicable in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your faithful God. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Can we celebrate Jesus in the place? If you are blessed, can you celebrate Jesus?